Okay, welcome. Thanks a lot for being here today. Um, we are going to go ahead and get started. Um, I'm Paul Lampy. I am the Director of Enterprise Analytics uh, for the Memorial Hermann Health System. We're located in Houston, Texas, and co-presenting with me today is Samir Khan, and he's a member on the team. He is the manager over our analytics group within the Enterprise Analytics space. Um, so with that, I'll get started. Um, our goal today is to get through the, the set of slides that we have to walk you through the process that we did in, in that, in, in the exercise that we, uh, uh, the, that we underwent, and then we'll leave time at the end for questions on how we did it or specifics on visas and things like that. So uh, with that, I'll go through an agenda. Um, so I'll introduce who we are so you understand a little bit more about us and the makeup that we have. Um, and then I'll talk to you about the problem that we're trying to solve. What's the use case in this situation? Um, we'll tell you how we started out on that journey and then how we actually built that journey. And then once we finished that, what was the result and what did we learn from there? Um, so with that, I'll tell you a little bit more about uh, the Memorial Hermann Health System. We're the largest provider of healthcare services in the greater Houston area. Uh, we are a level one trauma center. We have a life flight, and I'll just get it out of the way now. If you wanted to know, yes, the life flight TV show that was there a few years ago was about us. Um, so it was something that we had. Um, we're really proud of the organization that we have. We have 17 acute care hospitals all around the greater Houston area, um, and uh, we do a lot of great work. The other thing is, is everybody, everybody knows it, but not everybody believes it. Everything is bigger in Texas. Um, we serve the greater Houston area, which is the size of the state of New Jersey, and it has the population of the state of Indiana. So if that tells you anything about that. Um, so if you look around, the, so we're a series of loops around the greater Houston area. So the very small loop is, a, is called 610. The next one out is eight. The next one out is six. So if you look at the map on the right, the, that island in the middle is Manhattan. Okay, everybody's, a lot of people have been to New York. So this is the beltway. This is the second of three and a half, almost four loops that we have around the city. Um, and so you can kind of see just the expansive size of just the, the what we call Houston proper, uh, not including our outside area. This just tells you a little bit more. We have 3,500 life flights a year. We have 2.3 million patient encounters. Uh, we have about 26,000 total employees, 17 acute care facilities um, across the area. So we're a pretty, uh, pretty big operation in the area. So why are we talking today? What was our problem? Our problem was labor costs were increasing. They were well over budget and they were continuing to rise and we did not know why. We could not come up with an answer. Anybody else in that boat? We were like $20 million in overtime for nurses alone. And we had no idea why, and we couldn't figure it out. We had data, and I'll show you the data problem here in just a minute, but we had data all over the place, and there was no way for us to really understand what that is. So. We had a lot of people hypothesizing what this was, and you know how this goes. It's the, well, they, they do this, and they do that, and the problem's here, and what about that, and oh, we can't do this. So we're like, enough is enough. Let's figure this problem out. So some ideas that people had. Some people said, well, we have a lot of nursing vacancies, and it takes a long time to fulfill, i.e., let's bring, blame the recruitment process. It's a tough market. I mean, we've got a huge amount. If you've ever been to the Texas Medical Center, it's like a downtown area of just hospitals. Um, we have major, major players in the greater Houston area. We have a lot of nurses, so it takes a long time to be able to fill those, and everybody's always fighting for nurses, right? Um, so everybody's saying it's a recruitment problem. Well, then other people are saying, well, we have nurses, and a lot of nurses take leave and do FMLA, and they're out of the office, and that's what it is, and so we're bringing in contract folks, and we're bringing those people in, and then other people were saying, well, it's because those nursing managers are not using the scheduling tool. The scheduling tool tool tells them what we anticipate census to be and so they need to staff to the census and they don't staff to the census so we have left less patients we have more nurses and that's why we're over because we have more than we should should have and more than we're budgeting for and then other people are saying well it's the onboarding process yeah we finally find these people and once we hire them well 
it takes forever to get them in the door. And then by the time they get through orientation and then they have culture day and then they come on board, I mean, it just takes forever and that's what the problem is. So we have all these different ideas and no one has anything except for the opinion that they have of that. There's no data to back this up. Hence the call to my office from our CIO. He says, the EVP over all the acute care facilities needs your help and your team needs to do this. And so hence the problem that we're working with. So what did they want? Um, it's always the question, right? So what is it that you need? Um, the first thing they wanted is they wanted transparency in nursing cost data. They wanted it to be very user friendly. They wanted to be accessible yet secure. They wanted to know what's the cost, but you can't drill down and see what any other nurse at, the, at a facility is actually making. So you had to make sure that you were masking things correctly and you were looking at the data in a way that was sensitively handled. The other thing is they wanted to be able to correlate and figure out which one of these problem or problems is the culprit or are the culprit of making this happen. And they wanted it in a dashboard. They wanted one solution for all facilities all units at every facility with the security all bundled up. How many people get that, that kind of request all the time? Yeah. You're like, and that's all you have to do. Just do that. Just, just get that together for us. They wanted a one-stop shop. I want to see the system at a whole, drill down into all 17 of my facilities and figure out which one it is. And I want to understand exactly what the problem is. Okay, great. So who's going to look at this thing? So it was gonna be the senior leadership. It was gonna start with them. So the chief nursing officers at all of our locations, all the executives that are in the human resources group, because remember, there's all sorts of fingers being pointed at HR and onboarding and training and everywhere else, recruitment. Um, and everything was gonna finally go up to the number two person in the company who is the EVP who oversees all 17 acute care facilities. Best part about it, they gave us six to eight weeks to do the whole project. <laughs> and now that six to eight weeks, that was getting the data, wait till you find out how many data sources were. Getting the data, bringing the data in, figuring it out, gathering the group of people, making the decisions, getting a dashboard up and running, testing it out, making sure we have good data and deploy it out to everybody. Six to eight weeks, easy, right? Um, so uh, that's what we thought. So uh, we started the journey. And so who did we bring in? We called the A-team. And uh, Mr. T is gonna come up and talk to you in just a few minutes um, and tell you about how he and his team built it. Uh, but we, um, we formed a, a group of people and we said, we've gotta get together, we've gotta get together fast because there's a tight deadline on getting this done. So we had our executive sponsor, we had leaders all within different levels of the human resources team. We had people at all of the facilities coming in to represent. Now, we didn't have everybody from all 17 facilities, but we made sure that we had this position and this position from a facility, and we had this facility represented, and we had this facility represented so that no one really felt left out. The other thing is, is we brought in all of our ISD solution partners. So we have around 700 folks within our IT department um, to support the, the whole system that we have. And so there's an owner for a lot of different systems, which is awesome, but that's a lot of people to bring together. Um, and then our team, of course, the enterprise analytics. So what do we have to do? We had to bring those pieces of the puzzle together and try to fit those in. So we were here, and these are all the different things that we had to try to, to bring in. Um, so these, every one of these, except for the second one, the dashboard development, that's what we did. Every other one of these, there are six different information systems that we had to bring in. Guess how many owners of those six information systems we had? Six. Um, one person had a different one. So that was six people alone to bring in to say, you own this system, you own that system, you own that set of data, you own this. We all need to come in and figure out how we're gonna bring that data in. So we brought that big team together and said, what do we need? We wanna get all of your opinion, all of your mindset, all of everything that you need um, and you wanna get out of this together. We need your insight and we wanna understand what it is that you're trying to accomplish. And so we had them brainstorm. What are the things on labor spend that you need? Overtime, special pay, agency pay, what are all the categories that you use? And then what are all the potential factors? Notice the potential factor list grew and doubled over time. So this group came up with an additional five or six that also came in and said, these are other problems that we have, and these may be the culprit or culprits. 
Um, so then we went through and we started to define the data. How many of you have a data governance program at your organizations? How many of you think you're going to have one this time next year? Hopefully everybody raises their hand because you need it. Um, data governance is a huge, huge need. Um, and if you're not defining the data, uh, it's, it's going to be... It's going to be a really difficult thing to make data visualization and, and create a data culture because everybody's going to be speaking a different language. And that's a whole different talk and a whole other subject that I have a huge platform for. Um, so if you want to talk about that, come up later and I'll, I'm happy to talk to you about it. But defining the data for us was really important because we sat in a room and argued about what is overtime pay? Well, what's special pay? How do you do that? We found out by just this part of the exercise alone, Samir and I were sitting on the executive floor of our, of our company, and we realized instantly with our HR leader, we found an $875,000 problem just because of how data was being collected and accounted for. We easily identified, well, what is this one outlier? Like, What's that dollar amount? And that dollar amount was one or one one group, and how they were treating, how they were treating nurses, and how they were giving bonuses based on, uh, on, a, on a kind of a loophole, if you will, of of how you can handle paying. And so, data governance is a huge, huge thing to make sure that everybody is looking at it in the same way. Because we have 17 different hospitals, and if everybody isn't handling and entering data in each of these systems in the same way and processing them, we're never going to be able to look at the bigger picture because everybody's going to always be an outlier because everything's different. So, so data governance is a huge, huge thing. So we got to that point, and we just said, it's time for us to build it. So we started out, so here are our six different systems that were each in their own individual, individual silo, if you will, within the organization. We had to get those, that data extracted out, find a central place to put that, which then we connected into Tableau. Um, each one, of the, one was an Excel, one was Workday, one was Probade, which is a system that we use to track uh, temporary staff that come in, like eight from agencies. Uh, we, had a, we had an application that came in uh, that was data on FMLA. So we used everything that we had and put all that data together. We had different formats from a text file to an access database to XML. That's how that data would come out. And so we had to figure out a way to wrangle this. And so um, we had to standardize the data and really go through and make all the pay periods equal um, and make sure that we were all accounting for things in the, in the same way. That's why you have the picture of herding cats because it was very much um, under our six to eight week deadline to do all this, right? It was really bringing all those things together and trying to figure that out and the team did an amazing job. So we could not use that large team for the big picture. There was just no way we were ever going to be able to do that. They were great. They had lots of awesome ideas, but we were, the, the train was not moving down the tracks because it was heavy. There were a lot of people on that train. So we had to pare that down. So we got, some, so, so we, we got a subgroup from the A team down to, uh, to the gang, and we, we brought a smaller group of folks together who were diverse in their expertise, so we still had diversity within the different uh, disparate groups who, who were going to have this or utilize this tool, but then we also um, needed to be able to make some decisions and make them quickly. Um, the other thing that we did, um, we're firm believers in the next two things. Um, we are, our job is to make sure that we're educating our users to understand what is it that we do, what is it our dashboard's going to do for you, and what is it it's not going to do. And what is this whole process like? And I'll tell you, the thing is, what it is, is it's a collaborative effort. We will work with you. We will help, help ask questions. We will have a collaborative session in which we try to help you understand. This is not you telling us, I need a pie chart right here, and I need a, a histogram here, and I need this there. And I, that, No, that's our job. We'll build the diagrams, we'll build the visualizations, we'll help you tell the story with data. You tell us the problems, you tell us what you're gonna do with it. Um, and that, and the, that leads us to the second thing, the thing that we always, 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 always ask, every dashboard, what are you going to do with it? When you have this dashboard, what's the action you're gonna take? How often are you gonna do that? 
Who's going to look at it, and what are they going to do? Because if they're saying, well, I just want to look at it on a monthly basis and snapshot it and quarterly and put it in my PowerPoint, we're going to be like, eh, we're not going to do it for you. Because that's not, that, that doesn't work. This needs to be something that you live and breathe and you play with it, and there's a lot of people using it, and that this is something that you actively use on a regular basis. And so this is collaborative. This is a tool we're building for you, so we want you to have a lot of say in that process, but then it's, it's, a, it's an effort between both of us to work together to make sure that we're both succeeding and we're using your knowledge and our knowledge appropriately. So, the process that we went through, these are some of the questions that we asked. And this isn't exhaustive, but this is just an example of, of the things that we say. And, and so, for example, on here, it's, you know, what has been our overtime trend over time? And how do you want to look at that? Do you want to look at it by facility, by cost center, across fiscal years, quarterly? How are you looking at it in this way? And so we ask a lot of different questions. And really, that, that process makes makes the end users think. We have this thing that we call thinking data. A lot of people have a lot of problem making the leap from managing the way they've always done it to managing with data and access to information and knowledge and insight. And so we really try to work with them and help them understand exactly how it is that your job changes when you have access to the rich data and the visualizations that are able to come out of bringing all these tools and all these data sets um, together. And so we said, who are the people? And we sat down and we actually said, what are you gonna do with that? How are you gonna use this? What are the tools that we need to put in there? How do we need to filter this data? And that helped us know what the visualizations we needed to put in there are. And then we wanted to prioritize. We had six to eight weeks. Did I say that? We had six to eight weeks. We could not do everything. So we have a, we have a mindset of crawling, walking, and running. And we told you, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna help you crawl. Phase one is gonna be phase one. And we're gonna help get the most important thing. So we're gonna help you, what are the biggest priorities that you need to have? And so that's what we did. We prioritized the work that we were doing, and we said, we're not gonna be able to give you everything on day one, but we'll help you crawl. And at that point, it'll be just our end data, you'll be able to explore it, you'll be able to see things, it'll be probably pretty simplistic, it'll have some filters and you'll be able to manipulate it, but then once we get and use that for a little while, tell us how to tweak it, tell us what you like, tell us what you don't like, and then we'll add more features in it while you're using that first phase. And then you'll start to be able to drill down. We'll put thresholds in there to say, well, look, this is, this is an outlier because we only want you to be at this point, or you know, this, th you've used this many uh, agency hours in a, in a, in a pay period. Um, and then we can start to run, and we can really give you a lot more data. So we use this quite often to make sure that we set expectations. And so every dashboard we have probably has a phase two and a phase three and a phase four and it keeps going. Um, these are living, breathing things. And so this also helps in the, in the maturation process of your users of understanding exactly what it is. Um, and one of the things, it, yeah, so I'll actually I'll get to something else later. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Samir, and Samir's going to talk about uh, the visuals and how we actually displayed this in our end product. Thank you very much. Uh, that was a fantastic explanation of, of the process. Uh, for the visuals, um, I kind of want to just go over the overall technique of it. So um, what he explained was absolutely correct. We did not... We went, we kept everything very simple, all right? The first time, I think the first iteration of this, and I hadn't even put it on here, which was they wanted to see some correlation between over time and the various other aspects like uh, vacancies and so on and so forth. And we gave you know, ourselves a, a pat on the back because we gave them this cool looking uh, scatter plot and it had this um, averages that were like quadrants and they were like dynamic and we're like, this is awesome. And we gave it to them and they were like, I don't understand what I'm looking at. And I said, I get it. You've never seen one of these before. And I tried to explain it to them and they were like, no, I still don't get it. And I said, okay, let me give you some bar charts. Oh yeah, we love bar charts, right? So, uh, and, and then we gave them more bar charts. So we said, just bar the heck out of this thing. And, and what I, I learned from uh, reading a lot of blogs out there is if you keep it simple and you, it, bar charts can do a lot of amazing things. And not only that, People love interactivity. They love the action portion of Tableau more than they just love the charts. Everybody's, everybody does charts. 
But when you say, hey, I can click on this and then drill it down, now they're really, now they're really, now you're really talking their, uh, their, their game. So what we did here is just give you some overall uh, big KPI numbers. Uh, I love doing this big KPI up front so you can just see what's my total over time spent up top. We gave them a little color coordination, so it gives you year over year. So if it's red uh, from the previous year, it gives you the red right away. Uh, you can hover over it and get a tool tip, and it gives you all the detail numbers for last year and this year. So nobody wants to see the details all the time. Okay, guys? Like, I know they want, they, that's what they tell you, but that's not what they want to see. Okay? <laughs> what they want to see is what is the details telling me. Okay? And what the details are telling me is I'm red. And what do I need to do about that red, right? And what is it that you need to do about that red is let's look down below, all right? So where is it that I am red? What facility is causing me to be red, okay? Let's look at what cost centers of those facilities, so what nurse units are causing me to be red. Let's go look on the right-hand side and see which employees are causing me to be red, right? This is getting a little sensitive now, but there, we've actually found there's one employee that was quite famous that everybody knew who this person was. And they're like, yeah, I know that guy. He works in like four different departments, and he's just like a, like, you know, he works at Life Flight, and he works in uh, multiple nurse units, and he does, you, you know, overtime everywhere because he's just that talented. And I was like, that guy's costing you like fifty thousand dollars a year, you know? Like, <laughs> so, uh, but I guess it was a great insight. And again, that was simple use filter, right? That was just like click use filter, boom, you know, <laughs> like use as filter, right, type of thing. And then the curious part here is that you can actually click on the employee. And then it will filter the other way, so it will show you which units and which facilities that you, employees worked at. That information they never had before. So it was kind of amazing to see just the filtering piece of it, how they were able to uh, really get a lot of insight on that that they didn't have previously. And we will put a disclaimer out there. Uh, it's on the bottom of the slide. This is all sample data, so yes. uh, this is not real stuff. So don't look at this and go, holy cow, look at what they're doing right there. <laughs> um, so most of this is really all sample data, so don't take any stock in anything that you see. Thank you, Paul, for that. Um, the other thing we did was we really kept things very consistent view by view and tab by tab, right? When you get used to looking at something, Tableau users, you, you can understand it, and then when you look at it again, you're like, I got it. This is a filter on the right-hand side. You're gonna see that we use a certain template at, at, our, at our place, uh, and you can see that certain things are in certain places all the time. So filters on the right most of the time, you got a nice little heading, we have an about page for every dashboard that tells every user what the dashboard's used for, the purpose of the dashboard, who to contact for if you wanted to know more about it. Um, but again, here is a, is a simple example. This is special pay. Uh, again, we did the drill down as well. We gave you year by year. We gave you a little tree map there, kind of cutesy, but basically it's giving you some details on what, what type of special pay. So if it's callback bonuses or what is it that's the most. And then you don't see it here, but we also give you the facility cost center and employee drill down, exactly like you saw on the, la on the last page. And that's Eight, where we found the 875. That's where we found the 875. Like, who, <laughs> who are these guys with all this... Uh, a, a huge uh, bonuses. Agency spend looks a lot like the previous one because it, ex it is exactly like the previous one. It's designed that way so you understand it again, what's going on with it. Um, and it just gives you the same information again with the agency spend and what's going on with agency. Um, and workday vacancy. This was quite, uh, quite a, uh, a detailed and, and tough one to do because it was hard for us to understand the process of workday vacancies. So we use Workday uh, as an HR tool, as an application, and we track open requisitions for nurses in that particular tool. When you're designing dashboards, I implore everyone to understand the workflow of the actual application, right? So what, what, what happens first, right? Does the requisition get open? Who opens it, right? How long does it take? What are the different statuses that it's going through? And then based on that, we gave this, uh, we gave this visualization. It was basically a quick, how, how many are open right now and how many, were, uh, how many have been filled? So I'll give you a good, uh, good uh, example of why dashboards and when you start doing transparency in this manner, it really affects it and impacts it. When we first looked at this, we didn't have uh, the filled. We didn't have any filled information at all. Um, and we just showed you the giant number of 2,000. And they were like, oh my God, we have 2,000 vacancies? Like, who, what are they doing over there in that department? And then that department's uh, manager called me and VP, and they were like, you know, we should probably put filled in there. Like, we're doing a lot of work. Like, we're filling all these, right, all the time. I'm like, oh, that's a great idea. Like, so that you can show, like, you're actually, you know, you're filling them, but they're just, they're just opening them like, like crazy. So that really told a different type of story, right? And, and it really gets into, Let's talk to those folks and figure out what they need so that they, we can show that information to them. And it was quite easy to show. Uh, and again, from a data perspective, 
we were able to draw all that data out. So when I requested the data and I worked with the data folks, and I encourage all our folks, uh, our data dashboard designers to work with the data folks because uh, they just gave me everything. I said, give me all the fills, give me the opens, give me everything because I don't know what I'm gonna, what they need, but eventually I'll have it all in my data and I'll be able to display it. Um, so that was uh, workday vacancies to be able to show that information. We also showed how long the vacancies were open by cost center, so you can see that on the left-hand side. You can see the top cost centers, so you can see which cost centers are having the most vacancies, and then you can also see, hey, out of, which, uh, out of those, based on the color coordination, the darker it is, the longer they've been open. So like, okay, what's going on here? So it's a really quick indicator, and then you can start drilling down. And each one of these dashboards also has a detail level, so you can get right down to the rec number, and you can just call up your requisition uh, person and find out, hey, what's going on with this rec? Uh, Non-productive hours. This was another thing that they started looking at, right? So uh, we talked about um, orientation, right? How long is it taking for orientation to occur, right? How long is it taking for onboarding processes? Well, they record all those inf that information, and we are able to give you that information here and in hours, so you can see uh, what are the hours it takes for each of those actions to occur. Um, and then you're able to then select out uh, on the right-hand side. Again, the filters are always on the right. You're able to select off uh, certain key cost centers that they use all the time for a revolving, um, revolving uh, non-productive use. So they use the cost centers to keep like nurses that they always get from like uh, colleges to come in, uh, the residency nurses. But for the most part, you're able to see that information and you're able to see it over time as well. Now, this is uh, one of my favorite slides, actually, uh, this one, the next one coming up, which is uh, my time and schedule. So this is a scheduling system that we use. Um, uh, it's kind of like GE that we have, the application. This allows, like Paul was saying, the ability for nurses to schedule uh, electronically. It alerts them when the nurses are in overtime. So if I put you and I put you in on the schedule, it will tell me, oh, this nurse has already worked you know, everywhere in the entire system based on that, this is overtime and you should, you should probably watch out for that, right? So it allows for that. What this tells me is there are some people that are using this system, so if everybody was scheduling properly and everybody's census was in line, you would have a 100% match on basically your uh, fill rate, right? So you'd have uh, how many people got scheduled and how many people are coming in. But some of them are not a line. You see some like 168%, you see some like zero, right? Zero means you didn't set your schedule. If I walked into that nurse unit, I would see a paper schedule with like paper stuff on it, right? Because we know that's what you do, right? So you're not using it. So then we have to have a conversation. If there is over, that means you didn't adjust the schedule to the census that came in, right? Maybe uh, patients, they weren't that busy that, uh, that month, but it looks like you're you're, you're overbooked, you're 168%, your nurses are, must be going crazy, but they're really not, right? So it really is telling you the whole story of all the units in one particular facility. That's what that gives you here, right? It gives you just a general idea of where your outliers are. But here's where the best part of this is, is the next slide. We, we showed that that slide was available and that data was available to people for, before. And what facilities would do is they would average them all out and they'd say, oh, uh, I, got, I got some that are 168%, I got some that are zero, but eh, my average is a 98, so I think I'm good, right? And then they would come with that story to the monthly operating review, and the, and, and the, and the AVP was like, I don't understand, or the CFOs were like, I don't get it, like, if this is the case, then why, why is the overtime so much? And again, that's that correlation. Simple math, right? We just said, instead of doing the averages, we're just gonna do sum of averages, right? So we'll just sum them all up and we'll tell you where you lie in that, right? So we said that's, that's probably the way to see, okay, what's going on with you. So if you're to the right, so the middle blind is 100%, okay? And those are all my facilities to the left. If you have a lot of bubbles and they're blue and they're to the right-hand side, that means you are over a lot, right? A majority of your units are over. Okay? If you're red and you're all the way to the left-hand side, the majority of your units are under. Okay? So what this is telling you is not your average, but the, what is the majority of your units doing? And it was a very simple math, but it really was powerful for folks to see this, right? to say, what is going on with my facilities with hundreds of units, and now I'm able to see in one single chart what's going on with all those hundreds of units. So I think there's a kind of a really powerful way to visualize some of this information. And again, this comes with iteration. This comes with me going in and saying, uh, giving them the first chart and they're saying, well, you know what, they're saying it's 98%. And I'm like, oh, well, why, why are they saying that? Well, this is an easier way for me to show you that it's not 98%, <laughs> right? So uh, some of them were happy, some of them were not so happy, some of the CNOs with this chart. But uh, moving onwards, so rollout plan. This is very, very critical, okay? 
A dashboard is fantastic, but it is not good if you don't roll it out properly, if you don't train on it properly, and if you don't operationalize it, okay? So uh, we made this dashboard. The security was the biggest concern, right? So there's a lot of information here at an employee level. Um, so the access was granted at directors and above, right? Um, directors and above were able to see this information and then, and then tell their managers um, how to act on that, uh, on that particular information. So we kind of secured that that way using the groups. We also made it very transparent so all directors could see all other directors' information, right? And we made that on purpose because, again, transparency equals accountability, okay? Once they start seeing what other directors are doing, you're going to get some change happening very quickly. Um, opera operationalizing the dashboard. So there was a whole other group of CNOs, uh, chief uh, nursing officers, that created a whole other group. And uh, even the EVP, as you mentioned, basically looked at the dashboard and said, we want every single CNO, every single nurse director to use this dashboard at the monthly operating review. When you come every month, this is what you should be using to tell me why, what's, what's going on. When they heard that, everybody's going to use this dashboard, right? I mean, <laughs> you should be using the dashboard anyway, but when your EVP says it, you're probably going to use it a little bit more, right? So I think that's really helped us a lot with bringing that big level buy-in from the top, right? And, and, we, and we went to those folks. We demonstrated the dashboard to those folks. We demoed it to them, and they really understood the power of it. Uh, training, we trained all the, um, uh, all the business partners. So all the HR business partners were going to be the folks at the campuses that were going to train the CFOs and the CNOs and the, and the directors and so on and so forth on this dashboard. So we did sort of like a train the trainer, if you will. They sat in there, and we, did, you know, we deployed it that way. Uh, and again, then the operation, operation, uh, sorry, operation of the dashboard for the report owners. So having a specific report owner is also very important, okay? Uh, so that we can go to a, directly to a person and they know and they can guide us on enhancements and so on and so forth. So those are some of the main things that we did. The results of this dashboard, okay? So what happened at the end of everything and we get this information in, um, we see some really interesting results. Uh, so again, shining the light, right? Sunshine, right? Best disinfectant. So FMLA, often blamed for OT. It is not even close, okay? FMLA was so low, it was absolutely just minuscule all around. So it was not the cause for, for OT occurring, right? Um, agency spend, right? We're spending a lot on agency. Nope, not, not true either, right? We're not spending a lot on agency. As a matter of fact, agency spend was going downwards, right? Because there's a whole other initiative to not spend on agency. So, so apparently it worked, right? It was good. Um, and again, overtime. We did notice some special situations with overtime, right? Neonatal nurses, right? They're obviously very specialized. They're very hard to get. So we have to, you know, we have to use the ones we have, right? So we did notice some, some interesting uh, factors there uh, for the type of overtime and the type of nurse jobs that, uh, that came about. Um, vacancies. This was uh, something that was somewhat correlated, right? There are a, a lot of vacancies in certain units that were costing, uh, that were causing some of the overtime information. Um, and then there was just the general employees, like I mentioned, clocking in multiple places uh, to get as much overtime as they can. But the biggest one was the time and schedule, right? You're not using that tool. That is the tool at the point of care, right? Nurse walks in the door, that is the tool you use to control your overtime right then and there. If you don't have that tool and you're not using that tool, you're going to miss it. No, no amount of dashboards is going to help you because that's the place that you need to attack it. So I think that was kind of the biggest giveaway that, that, that we got from this was the MTAS was just an amazing, uh, this tool that we thought was very small in nature and is really not important in this whole process became the most important thing, to be honest with you. All right. Awesome. I appreciate it. So then um, from here, let's talk a little bit about the lessons that we learned. Um, so, and, and it's not that we learned these lessons that we didn't know these before. Some of them we did, some of them we didn't. Um, interviewing the direct users of the dashboard to get the, to get the requirements and understand exactly what are they going to use it for? What are they going to do with it? How are they going to operationalize this is key. And it's key for a number of reasons. One, you talk, Samir talked about how this was rolled out and who did the training. The owners of the dashboard were not us. We were not the owners of that dashboard. Now, did we publish it? Um, and by we, do I mean Samir? Yes. Uh, and did Samir build this? Yes, but we don't own this. This is not something that we look at 
on a regular basis. We don't know what's going on. This is something out there, operational, and they own this. A new CNO comes on board. They work with HR, they work with their nursing uh, office, they work with the executive team at that facility to use that dashboard and understand what it is and how that's integrated into the monthly operating report, the MOR that he talked about. Um, so really getting people invested at the beginning, getting them on board, having an ownership, having a sense of belonging into the dashboard is huge because it's gonna make your project so much more successful. Now, does it guarantee success? No, because we've done that same thing with other dashboards and that hasn't been exactly the case. But in this case, we saw that, we did that, and we saw very high alignment from the business units, on, both HR and nursing, on taking care of this. Another thing, data governance, it is key. If you don't have it now, start to do it. Um, we are, have been rolling out our program um, we've been spending about two and a half, three years now on getting that program up and running. Are we fully up? Nope. But are we working on it? Yep. And we're, it's, a, it's, a, it's a battle. It's a lot of work, but it's going to have a huge payoff in the long run. Start early. One of, the, one of the things that Samir talked about was he talked about the tabs that we have. One of the other tabs that we have, we call it the data dictionary tab. And it is a rule, we will not publish your dashboard because we have 130 users across our system that build dashboards. And we're the central hub that takes those and, and publishes those. If you don't have an about tab and a, a data governance tab, we'll tell you, go put that on there before we publish it because that tells you what every field on there means, how we're calculating that, who's the population, how are we defining that, so that everybody is on that same page. That was our interim step until we have a full-fledged business glossary that's out there that we can show as our data dictionary and you know exactly what it is. We just embedded it right there in a tab. And in fact, most of the time, that's the first tab that opens up. So by default, when you get to that dashboard, it comes to tell you the about tab and it says this is what the purpose of this is this is who should use this this is how you should use it this is how often the data is refreshed this is where the data comes from a myriad of things that we put out there so data governance is key engage engage yourself early in that process Samir said this already sunlight is a great disinfectant when you shed light how do you fix bad data show it to them just show them the bad data, because nobody wants to be that person, especially when it's transparent and everybody can see, they're like, well, Samir, what's happening to your team over there at the blah, 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 blah uh, facility? You know, why, why, why are you so far off? Why are you not using this tool? It's an accountability thing. And now everybody can see that, and so everybody's gonna have that understanding. And so um, you're gonna understand and, and work on your data uh, and make sure that you're doing your part to ensure, and then we're able to track that over time. The other, the other one that's, that we did have that uh, I forgot to put on here um, is uh, at the very beginning, and this was, a, this was, a, this was a, a huge win for us. At the very beginning, what did they want to concentrate on? Nursing data, right? So Samir and I talked about how do we build out the data set? What are we going to do? And I said, Samir, put every employee in there whether they're a nurse or not, just do it. Because I guarantee you, what's get, and I see people laughing and nodding their heads, what's gonna happen as soon as we turn this on? This is awesome, can we have this for all of our employees? <laughs> so I said, exactly just do right. it. It's gonna be easier to do it at the beginning. And sure enough, that paid off because as soon as we put it out there, we got the question. Can you turn this on for everybody else? So now we're doing it for security, and now we're looking at other groups um, where there's a lot of other overtime. And so now um, we were able to be very agile and say, sure, hold on, let us just do that. There we go, now we turned it off, and now the filters are not hiding all that other information, and now you can see it. Um, so that, that premonition of really kind of planning ahead um, and making sure you understand what, you're, what are the users asking for, but really what are they really gonna be asking for? And kind of anticipating those needs a little bit. Um, with that, thank you for your time and for uh, sharing.